think uh, that the executive producer has just graciously granted us more time so we can drive it till about 8.30. Well, uh, you, you should tell us more how people can really understand this. I'm quite happy you talked about the figures because some people don't like figures. So uh, that is why we've not been talking in uh, figures, uh, basically. But again, the palliatives, we still just want to go back to those palliatives. Uh, the buses, some already complained that these are buses that run on diesel to the extent that they've asked uh, this big question. Uh, diesel has been deregulated for uh, five years now. Uh, they've been asking the proceeds from that particular uh, product. How has the government been managing it so that we can now say from the eye of that management, we can look towards the Christopher Colladi's uh, management that is about to take off through the reinvestment of the subsidy on petrol? Well, when you talk of uh, the uh, removal of subsidy from diesel and what the, the, the savings from that, Basically, what, what that has done is it has helped to reduce the deficit, the level of deficit that government would have run if it was still subsidizing uh, uh, diesel. So, in fact, if, if we were also still subsidizing diesel, the, the figure of the deficit would have been much higher. And obviously, the challenges of how do you fund that deficit would have been bigger. Now, even now, we are struggling with a situation where you borrow from the market to, fin for, to fund recurrent expenditure. That is unacceptable. You know, and that is part of what the whole government reform, budgetary reform, is trying to address. Uh, where by, 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 you know... So, I think for me, I don't know whether anybody that has appeared on this, especially from the government side, because sometimes people think that if we come from the government side, we are, we are so insensitive... First of all, I think it's very important to understand that, especially at the meeting yesterday, if people had the pain with which the president spoke about his appreciation of the pain that Nigerians are going through, I think people would realize that he's a very, very uh, uh, sympathetic person. He's not, he's not somebody who is trying to inflict pain on people. But, but an, as an economist, yes. do you think this is the only way to solving this problem or achieving government goals? As an economist, in fact, uh, they, you can't talk of an only way. There are always options. But this is the best and least painful option of addressing the problem. You see, there is no, they say there is no, no pain, no gain, or no gain without pain. There are, there are, there are probably, and, and we have tried, what, what are the alternatives? Continue to do this piecemeal. We have tried it before. And all you are doing is, okay, you know, the, the, you know that the illness is there, it's slowly eating away at no, the but some public. argue that tomorrow, yes. what stops another government from saying, well, uh, I can't see any structure here to sustain this. I put back the money for subsidy. What changes? Well, we have SAP, to we have tomo everything. tomorrow is a long way away for, because we are hoping that at least this... You see, that's why the president is doing this now. No, but because you, you in, in, the next, planning, in the next... That plan should have been factored into all of this. It was. It has been. It, has, it is actually... <laughs> it's... it's, it's, it's but you see, when people, we are hoping, you know, over the next four years, first of all, the pains will subside with the palliatives, uh, with the social safety net network, network that is being put, social safety nets. And people are only looking at the buses. I don't know, if you can give me just two, or th two, two minutes, let me run through all the other measures, because people are just focusing on the buses. Uh, is it the measures that are inside that book? <laughs> yes. You, because, you, I mean, <laughs> they have all gone through <laughs> that book. I said it was put in almost every paper that government yeah. could afford to put it in. Yes. So I'm sure that a host of people have seen it. And to be honest, they have criticized that severely, saying that even that one, we don't even know how much. Yesterday I asked the Minister for Health, how much really do we lack in deficit? I mean, how much is the health sector lacking that we have to 
put another scheme for uh, targeting um, child and maternal mortality inside a scheme as, I don't know, inside a scheme like that. We can't even say this is how much we intend to spend. This is how much we're looking at. If we have this amount for this particular sector, we can say that we will we'll bring this sector to 50% efficiency. We don't have figures like that. No, no, that. there are figures. There are people the, who are the, interested in those kind of figures. There, there are figures. Okay, if you want figures, now I can give you figures. There is a total estimate of, assuming, say, a $90 per barrel price of oil. is slightly higher now. We're talking of about 1.134 trillion total, and given the current consumption of petroleum and so on, I mean of uh, petroleum products, especially uh, um, um, uh, yeah, petroleum. Out of that amount, about 574 billion is annually will come to the federal government. And what we are talking about here is if you like earmarking sorry 100 and how much will come to the government five, about 574 billion 574 billion how is, is that money coming money? to the government from that is money that would have been if we had continued to subsidize the uh, petrol at 65 naira per, per liter we assuming like assuming a price of ninety dollars per barrel. Were we interested? Sorry, Mr. Minister, but were we interested? Because I know that the Senate was still looking at the management of that subsidy money, saying that it's very possible that the one point one four trillion that the minister for the coordinating minister of the economy was talking about was we didn't even have to spend that much. Why didn't we at least wait? for the end of that particular hearing and see, you know, there were a host of why, 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 you know, but some of those questions are important. You see, first of all, if we are thinking that there will ever be a time when there will be no why, 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 there would never be and such a time. And if can reduce the number of whys. The, but the, 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 I, I think the, the analogy I gave you is that, and I think coming back to what Suleiman said, the family meeting held the family is Nigeria or the, the patient that is actually bleeding with a life threatening illness the head of the family is the president, that's the final ultimate head of the family he took a very tough and painful decision and I think here like I said yesterday at another event the president needs to be appreciated for his courage. Would it be a bad idea if the government were to suspend this plan for two months before reintroducing it? You want a yes or no answer? <laughs> yeah, because we're out of time. No.